What is up everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert. If you're in the fencing industry and you've been to any of the industry events in the last couple of years, whether it's Fence Tech, Fence Show Security Expo, any trade related event, or been on social media anywhere, I'm sure you've heard of Mosier One. I certainly have, it caught my attention and I've seen enough of their ads to stop and say, we gotta get one of these things, put it together, figure it out, and see if it's just as good as they say it is. If it is, I think it could really change how we measure yards, job sites, etc. in the fencing industry, as well as any of the related industries. Now, before we get started, I wanna be very clear, we purchased everything at full price. None of this was donated or given to us uh, in exchange for a review. Uh, we're not being paid by Mosier for this review and reaction to you guys. So it's all on us and the review I give you is going to be based on my real world opinion. As always, if that changes, you'll be the first to know. Okay, so what we got, we've got the Mosier One unit itself. We also got the Mosier stick. So with the Mosier unit, you set it on the ground. For best results, it needs to be on the ground, roughly six seconds. We'll get into that in the field review. But the Mosier stick enables you to not have to bend down every six seconds, placing the unit on the ground. So we've got the Mosier unit itself. We've got the Mosier stick, which is actually three components. Uh, we'll see what they are. So module housing and phone clamp. We've got the extended pole, and then we've got a tool bag to where everything will fit in that as well. I also went ahead and got the tablet clamp because we use uh, iPads in our trucks, uh, whether we're viewing Job Nimbus or a county assessor's website for plot maps, yard measurements, that sort of thing. We've always got an iPad. So rather than use our phones and enter a new device into the whole mix, we're gonna see if we can't get it to work on an iPad. For reference, uh, this is a two-year-old iPad Pro. All right, let's get into the Mosier one itself. For ease, I went ahead and cut it before we started. All right, so we've got the Mosier one, we've got it getting started. So one thing about it is uh, before this even arrived, so right after we placed the order, they sent a video, they sent an email with a video in it. It's about an eight minute video. It's uh, basically like a quick start guide, how to use it, that sort of thing. We'll get more into that in the field trials portion. Uh, today's video, I really just wanna unbox it, put it together and just see what it looks like. So we've got the Mosier one, we've got a whole get started guide. So we're gonna go ahead and charge it. Now I have downloaded the Mosier Pro app. So that may come into play later. If we've got to charge this, uh, we might not be able to set it up quite yet. Uh, but I do have the app on the iPad. I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly what that setup looks like. Basically, I created a free account, but I haven't gone through the uh, getting started process yet. But it's, uh, yeah, so it's a three step process. Charge it, download the app, connect it, follow the setup and registration. So we've got the Mosier One unit itself. Nice carrying case. Kind of looks like a, uh, that makes sense, like a measuring tape carrying case. We've got the Mosier One unit itself. So it's pretty handy. Now, one of the things that the video talked about was knowing that the tip is what you always reference on measurements. So when, you know, when you're tapping it to a post, always make sure this arrow is aligned the same way throughout the whole property. So as you change directions and measure, this always stays the same. If it's pointing north when you start the measurement, you wanna make sure it points north throughout the whole measurement. We also have a charging cable. I believe we will probably get a longer, we've got a longer one of these likely. So leave this here. Let's look at the tablet holder. This is something I'm curious about is if it will fit these iPad Pros. Like I said, I'm trying to not introduce another piece of technology by bringing my phone into the mix. If we can keep everything on the iPad. See, the idea is it's going to create a uh, site map for us that then we can download. It says instantaneously as soon as it's done and then I can upload it directly from here into Job Nimbus. You can likely, depending on what bidding software you use, you could probably also likely upload it to there to reference. All right, so first impressions, the tablet holder is pretty substantial, pretty thick. It's plastic, but it has rubber grips on it. Okay, it expands out. 
Will it expand out enough though? So this iPad Pro has the uh, pin holder on it as well, which makes it a little bit wider. Uh, if we need to lose the pin holder, it's not the worst thing in the world. I rarely use it on a job site. It's more for taking notes at industry events. We're not there yet. Let's see if we can get there. Now this handle is probably going to be a problem too. So if anything, we'll probably slip it under there. Oh, no. All right. So barely, barely not big enough. So I wonder, no, barely not big enough. So iPad Pro with a pin holder is not going to work. Um, let's go ahead. Well, for the sake of the video, I'll forego taking this cup, this case off, but uh, yeah, so we'll likely need to look at a case that doesn't have a pin holder on it. Like I said, not the end of the world. I don't use the pin at all on job sites. Really, it's for uh, industry events, taking notes and that sort of thing. But we will get you a measurement on exactly how wide this is. Man, it just barely, barely doesn't fit. So without the pin holder on it, uh, you know, it's gonna be probably in here-ish. So, should work. We will test that here in a moment. All right, we'll put this to the side, take the case off here in a minute. All right, let's get into the stick. So this is the, which component is this? This is the module housing. So this is what the Mosier 1 will actually reside in. So again, uh, we're making sure to line up the pointed end of the Mosier 1 unit. Making sure that we can see this light clearly. So the status light's important when we get to the field uh, testing. So it'll, based on the videos I've seen on it, uh, it'll actually change colors when uh, it's time to either basically it lets you let you know that it's registered setting it down before you move it now one of the things the video talked about is so this is flexible so it will move so that if it's on on uneven terrain it will somewhat accommodate for that but when you're putting this Mosier one unit in don't hold it from the top hold it from the actual casing slide the Mosier one unit. Oh, it's okay. So that makes sense. So it's very uh, grippy. It grips it very well. So that's why you want, you don't want to put it in with the, with this attached to the pole because it does, does grab it quite a bit, but fits in nicely there. So again, refers to the point with the LED as the measuring reference point start a video so this is actually going to be the phone uh, holder so I've got an iPhone for reference just like that it will hold the iPhone Pro Max of course like any good fence guy the screen protectors cracked uh, but it will hold an iPhone Pro Max so all right with a case. So it's got a, uh, I don't know, Pelican case or some sort of hard case. So phone with a case will work with the phone adapter. Like I said, we're going to get the iPad to work with it because I don't really want to introduce a another piece of technology to where I'm having to send, send it from my phone to the iPad, upload it into the software. All right. And this is what will attach uh, either the phone or we're going to use the tablet holder so it will actually attach it uh, to some part of the stick. As for the stick, so we've got a telescoping stick here so it actually folds down to a pretty small form factor. I was wondering if this was going to come in multiple pieces or if it was one it came in a pretty small box so just like uh, you know any tripod you've used looks like it extends nicely just using these quick locks 
So our Mosier one unit will attach here. Nice sturdy metal housing or metal pole. It's not heavy. I'd have to weigh it, but pound, two pounds, pretty light. So this has ridges. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's got ridges in here inside. So teeth that will uh, grab this eyelet. So you want to make sure you're installing it or when you're putting it together, you're putting it together uh, straight just because it will, where you tighten it, it's going to grab down on it. Just like so. I don't think we have to get it too awful tight. Um, so there we are. We've got the assembled Mosier 1 unit. Now it is minus the iPad holder. So this, uh, bracket will go in here. Now I like that it's adjustable. That way you can, when you're holding it, you can adjust your phone or your tablet. It's a nice touch. This is pretty close to orange, so we're gonna call that in the orange family. Nice touch. And now that makes me nervous. So. Setting this down, um, this neck uh, flexes quite a bit, so I'm not sure. So maybe that's probably why this will loosen so that everything sits. There's no actual, actual stress put on this. I mean, it seems like a pretty robust piece, but I don't think it's a good idea to put just any undue stress on that that's not needed. Now for the bag, all this is packaged really well, but there's not a bunch of extra packaging, which is nice. So sometimes when you're opening these, there's foam, there's foam peanuts, there's just all this extra filler that you got to figure out what to do with. I mean, there is protective coverings, but there's just not a lot of extra stuff. So Mosier One bag or Mosier One stick bag. So it's got an over the shoulder carry here. Feels like a nice zipper. Anything in the field, the zipper is always the first thing to break. Seems like. All right, so we've got a we've got a pocket here, uh, presumably probably like for cables. You can probably fit your Mosier one in there uh, when you're not charging it. Now, one of the things I'm interested to see is how long a charge goes for on the unit. Um, that's one of, when I asked you guys in the fence Facebook groups about, to give me feedback on this. Uh, I believe it was Keith Pace had said, or uh, maybe it was Brad Jones, someone had said they had a real issue keeping this thing charged throughout the day. Now, most vehicles have a USB charger in it, so likely it could be just charging this thing in between stops, but we'll see. We'll probably do a power test on it, just see how long in a day it will last. But when it's not charging, it can fit in this case. Somewhat padded. I mean, this thing's pretty robust. It's not going to need a lot of padding. So you would take the Mosier one unit out. We'll go ahead and drop it in here. Uh, likely with, probably with the case and the charging cable will all fit in here. You could also, I guess, put a put your bracket, if you want to just completely disassemble it. Um, I'm curious, I'll look that up. I'll see if best practice is to uh, remove this? Probably not. That would be a bit of a pain every day removing this. I would just be, they made a point to say don't insert the Mosier 1 holding the stick because it'll cause this neck to flex. So the best practice might just be to loosen that. So it will all fit in the bag just barely. And the bag zips closed over that. So it looks like to me though, guys, the, um, so you'll pro you'll likely have to take the tablet holder off to get it to fit in the bag. Let's see. Actually, if we loosen this, it might fit. Mm, barely not. 
So yeah, you'll probably want to uh, take this off in between. I mean, I don't see transporting this thing a huge amount. My guess is it's, you know, there's a storage area under my back seat. My guess is this whole stick will just set in there. I'll take the tablet out. I'll probably take the Mosier one unit out to charge it. And then this will just get stored under that back seat. Um, case might be for, I don't know. I can't see traveling with it, but uh, I don't know. Let me know if you guys use the Mosier one and use the case, let me know. Uh, now let's do this. Let's tighten this all up. And we'll move over to our side camera to look at height to see exactly how tall this will be. And actually, in the meantime, I'm going to take the case off the iPad so that uh, we can also see the iPad fit in this. And then uh, we'll see a height with the iPad. So give me just a second. All right, through the magic of YouTube editing, we now have the iPad outside of its case. So it grips down firmly. It's in there really secure. So the rubber grippers, for lack of a better term, uh, do a good job. Let's step over here and do a height comparison, I guess, or just a look at how high it is, or it can go. I'm 5'9". So we'll know more when we field test this. my understanding, whoa, it's interesting. Okay, so make sure it's screwed in really well. My understanding is that you tap this on the ground lightly, but firmly, uh, every six seconds or so, uh, while keeping an eye on the screen. So this is at a really nice height. I mean, obviously we'll probably adjust this. It's got like an ergonomic grip on it. So it feels most comfortable right here, uh, which just means we will slide this dude around. This might actually be upside down. It doesn't matter, I suppose, but the uh, tensioning knob is up here. Uh, we will tighten this. All right, so. Make sure it is screwed in completely. ready to go. All right, so the flexible connector here, seen in blue, is really good at adjusting. So if I'm at an angle, it actually doesn't take just the weight of the pole with the iPad on it. It's gonna bring it down to flat with whatever grade or at least level with the grade. So just at a variety. Now you would wanna make sure you're consistent, but I mean, I think this would simulate being on a hillside no extra pressures needed. So that was one of the points in the video is make sure you're not pressing down or tapping hard. Just make sure you set it down. Watch for the status light to change, which you'll see it at, down at the point. So you'd wait for a status light to change and then you'd keep moving. But like I said, the important thing is if this, if it is pointed north, it stays pointed north throughout the whole yard. No matter which direction you're facing, the point should always face north based on feedback from the Facebook groups. If you provided feedback in those groups, thank you so much. All right, so the unboxing's done. I think you'll agree with me, it's packaged really well. Everything came in in great shape. It was easy to assemble. One note is that if you're using an iPad Pro with the pin holder case, you'll likely wanna get another case to use with it. Not a big deal for me, it might be a big deal for you. Something to note. Now let's charge the Mosier one, jump into a screen recording where we'll get this thing set up and ready to go. Okay, and we're back. Off screen, you're gonna have to trust me. I've got the Mosier one powered in and connected. It does show it as a, an available device here. We're going to tap to connect. It's worth noting there isn't a power button really on the Mosier one. Um, so I'm guessing this is just all a Bluetooth connection. Maybe it sends a signal to the Mosier one to power on. So maybe Mosier one is always just passively on in the background. I'm not really sure. We'll have to dig into that a little bit. Okay, so it's telling us that the reference point, we talked about this earlier, is the pointed end of the Mosier one. So the Mosier one has three rounded edges in the pointed edge 
that pointed edge will always be your reference point. To turn on, when you use a stick, place the device on a flat surface and tap the corner twice. Okay, so it does have a power button of sorts. The video is showing it just being tapped, which I guess it's already on because it's connected. Makes sense. Uh, to turn off, Mojo One will automatically turn off after 30 seconds of inactivity. Seems pretty fast. All right, so it's walking us through this. So we'll, when we're ready to start, we'll press the plus button. Uh, we'll place it on a stationary point at the starting point. So we'll put it in the stick, turn it on, connect it, press plus, start it at our first point. Uh, now, this is where the LED lights come into play. So I'm just gonna disconnect this real quick. Hopefully it doesn't screw us up here. But you can see a flashing blue light here. So that light will turn green uh, when it's recorded that point, when it's ready to move on. So move quickly, not slowly, avoid swinging or tilting. So that was one of the feed pieces of feedback that you guys gave in the Facebook group is not to swing this as you're walking. With, with the stick, it's always important to keep that stick vertical. I mean, obviously it will be moving with you, but not swinging it or moving it around. Uh, a lot of what is being measured in here is just through accelerometers and the like, where it is actively recording all the movement as this disc moves through space. So this is the point, so it says pause every six to eight seconds. And this was the point that a lot of you made was, it was hard to get used to in that you would have to stop every six to eight seconds, place it gently but firmly on the ground, let it measure that point, from the sounds of it, the more often you receive points, the more accurate the overall measurement is. And then of course, once the light turns green, you would continue measuring for another six to eight seconds. It also looks like on the video on the screen here, it's going to give us a visual representation also of, hey, we're in the green, yellow probably means set this thing down at some point soon. Red means you absolutely have to get a measurement right now, I'm guessing, but seems relatively uh, clear. To ensure motion one is kept still when pausing, loosen your grip on the stick. So you would wanna just set it down there on the uh, uneven terrain. So I actually just measured one. I, It would have been good for me to already have this set up, but to where we were, we had varying terrain. So they had uh, built the house, but they had a hill in the backyard. It was level for the first 40 or 50 feet, went up a pretty steep incline and then leveled off for another 40 or 50 feet. It would have been great to visualize that for the crew before they got there with this unit, taking measurements on level ground, even if it's before the six seconds, but the ground is going to change directions, taking a measurement there, then every six to eight seconds up the hill, and again at the top of the hill, taking a measurement off to our final. So that when we're drawing this map, or when the map is exported, it actually will show that hill, it'll represent that in a 3D way, on our plan for so that when the guys are headed out there, they can visualize exactly what they're gonna see when they get on site. Uh, this talks about on walls. Uh, so to pause, place the device down on a surface, keep it stationary until the LED turns green. So we're not really gonna deal with this too much on walls as building fences. Uh, but what I see this as is every time we, we get to an obstacle that we need to measure around, stop, and tap at every point in this obstacle. I'm thinking a shed in the fence line. I think on a commercial side, it could be any number of just construction debris or material stacks or whatever. Be sure to tap it at every point as you move around that. Now, from watching the videos, one of the things we'll be able to do later is ignore those points so that it will go, it will snap from your beginning to your end point, but by taking all those measurements in between, every time you change directions around an object, you're making sure that the overall measurement is more accurate. So it looks like when we're done, we're gonna place the device down on the surface and wait for the LED light to turn from red to solid green, uh, and then tap finish measurement on the app. We're almost finished. We're gonna move quickly and smoothly. We're gonna avoid swinging the stick we're gonna pause every six to eight seconds. And when pausing, we're gonna keep the device completely still, waiting for the green light before continuing. You know, in one of the videos they sent before the unit showed up, they emphasized the fact that you don't need to hold the device down firmly with the stick. You simply set it down without pressing firmly, wait for the light to turn green, 
and then move on or finish depending on where you are in the measurement process. We are going to go with imperial measurements. Feel free to leave me comments in the chat about that whole scenario, imperial versus metric. Here in the United States, we still use imperial. All right, we're gonna be introduced to some key features. We have our plus button to start and finish a project. We can view both in 2D and 3D. So I think this is where we're getting into measuring up and down hills is when we put that into a 3D representation, it will show us the varying terrain. One area I'm excited to test this for is gate openings. What I want to do is test a, a sloped gate that we would normally measure with a level and a measuring tape, but also remeasure it with the Mosher 1 and see how accurate we can get both distance for gate opening, but also drop, see if, how accurate we can get those measurements. I could see this being an incredible game changer if it only did that. It does a lot of other things, but if it can measure accurately opening distance as well as drop, I think it, we, this could be really beneficial. All right, we could save, open, export the measurements. We can edit, modify the completed measurement. So here's our timer bar. So it's counting out six seconds. Now, what, before it gets eight, and now it's going to 10 seconds, we've got to get this thing down. It's also giving us an audible signal so that if we're maintaining awareness of the ground around us, that we can still hear for that six to eight second mark. We've got to get this thing down and take another measurement. Looks like there's a questions uh, button up at the top for if we do need any more help. All right, congratulations. You're now ready to measure with Mosher. All right, guys, we've got everything set up. We've got our Mosher one charged, connected with the iPad, got everything set up there. Next up is field trials. We have a residential location, a commercial setup. We'll probably measure around here on the yard, simulate some obstructions in a way, that sort of thing. And if you hang around to the end, we've got a uh, bonus location set up for you. Keep an eye on the channel for that video coming up soon. For now, Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.